Good morning, morning. and happy Easter. (laughs) It's wonderful to see you all here uh, on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning, right? Uh, We are actually continuing our theme that we've had through Lent, which is called Wandering Heart, where we're figuring out faith with Peter, and I'll I'll have a little bit more to say about that. Uh, If you happen to be with us for the first time, we extend a special welcome to you. We're really pleased that you chose to spend part of your Easter Sunday morning with us and with Jesus in worship. And I also want to say a welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Again, if this is your first time, well, a special welcome to you as well. And if you want to reach out to us and get to know us a little bit better, I would send you to our website and the contact page in particular, rocklaverne.com contact. And there you can reach out with any questions you have or prayer requests or ask for the Rock Weekly, whatever it is that you need. Okay, a couple of announcements to make. One is uh, to mark your calendars for summer day camp. That will be June 24th to 28th. It's, this year is scuba, dive, what does it say? diving into friendship with God. So last uh, week in June, we're going to have our summer day camp. Also, we have a, another blood drive coming up, our um, Memorial Day weekend blood drive. That will be May 26th. And our small group, Book and Brew, Uh, has picked its book for the month of April. It's called Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. And so you can go out and pick that up now. And uh, they will be meeting on the 20th, I can't read all of that, let's see, 29th of April down at Laverne Brewing Company right down here in Laverne. Uh, Okay, and then last but not least, we have Bibles available. If you could use a Bible or if you know someone else who could use the Bible, they're on the table to the right as you exit the sanctuary as well as a couple other books uh, by an author named Bob Lenz, who was with us a few months ago. Um, And all of those are free to take. All right, that's all that I have for announcements this morning. Uh, We will continue with the call to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, who is merciful and just, has promised to hear us when we reach out to him, and has promised when we confess our sin to receive us and grant us forgiveness. So then, together let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Life-giving God, forgive us, us, God, God, for for thinking an empty tomb is nothing more than a prank. Forgive us for seeing discarded burial cloths and still holding tight to death. Forgive us for pushing away reasons to hope when you are alive and well in the world. Teach us to see what you see. Unravel the threads of our unbelief. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ is Risen, Alleluia.
Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord, for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to me for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom creator of the world, the liberator of your people, and the wisdom of the earth. By the resurrection of your Son, free us from our fears, restore us in your image, and ignite us with your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite the children who are here to come down in front and join me. We'll put this mask on first, though. Hi. Okay. Hi. Uh, how are you today? Yeah. Did you do? Have you have you uh, been able to do any egg hunting yet today? No. Oh boy. At school. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, at your house? I remember doing that when I was a kid. We would have, hi. <laughs> How are you? Have a seat, join us. I remember doing that when I was a kid. We would hide hard-boiled eggs, and we'd search them. We'd search for them, and we'd hide them again. We'd find them, and we'd hide them again. And find them. And by the end of the day, they were all cracked and crumbly, and they were falling apart. You know, there have been cultures all over the world that have used eggs as a way to celebrate the coming of spring and using it as a symbol of new life and things like that. 
But you know, part of the, part of the ways that Christians have done this starts, it, comes, it goes all the way back to Martin Luther, who's a really important guy in the history of our church. And you know what, you know what they would do is the men in the, in the households would empty the eggs. So they'd like, I guess, put holes at either end of them and get all the insides of them out so that they were hollow. And then they would hide the eggs for... <laughs> I just noticed there's, there's a remaining egg from our spring festival <laughs> right there. It looks like maybe two. If you find any eggs in, you, in the pews left over from spring festival yesterday, feel free to take them home. Anyway, but the, so they'd hide them, and then the women and the children would go and find them. And you know why it was the women and the children that would go and find them? Because it was the women who found the empty tomb on Easter Sunday. So the women would go and, and search for the empty eggs. So the hollowed out eggs were kind of like, like empty tombs. Now, I have some eggs here. We're not doing an egg hunt this morning, but I have some special eggs here that are, are here to, let's see, where's the one I wanted to use? To help you think about Easter. Well, let's see. Here's one. Here's one for you. Here's one for you. I'll use this big one. If you open it up inside you'll find jelly beans and this little piece of paper. And the little piece of paper is a way that this, these jelly beans can remind you a little bit about Jesus. Green for the grass he made, red for the blood he gave, yellow for the sun so bright, orange for the edge of night, black for our sins each day, white for the grace he gave, purple is for his hour of sorrow, and pink is for our new tomorrow. So you can take those home and you can, you can, yeah, you can have a reminder about what Easter is about with these little jelly beans. Now the, the yeah, I did my best, but not all of the white ones are actually very white uh, or apparently all the purple ones, but, but they're all in there. So there you go. Will we pray with me, please? All right, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for your new life. We are amazed that the women found your empty tomb. And that you live again today. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up here. You can go back. Good morning. The first reading today is from the book of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. Isaiah speaks these words. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
is from the uh, book of the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Luke writes these words. Then Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message that he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. According to St. Luke in the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Well, again, happy Easter. Happy Easter. For these last six weeks of Lent, we have been in this series that we've called Wandering Heart, Figuring Out Faith with Peter. We've been looking at faith through the eyes of the Apostle Peter and his interactions with Jesus. And I think it's safe to say that we've seen a lot of ourselves in Peter himself in his moments of faithfulness and his moments of faithlessness, when he's been humble and when he's been not so humble. He's very hum human, like us. And to this, today we see him in the first flush of trying to grasp and comprehend the news that the women bring from the tomb of Jesus. Of course, the most important thing in this whole passage is that Jesus is alive. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank Hallelujah. you. And the response of the disciples to the news that the women bring is a little less than inspiring, isn't it? Even Peter, who ran to the tomb to check it out, comes away with 
a response that is a little hard to interpret. He doesn't come away filled with faith in the knowledge of Jesus' resurrection. He comes away amazed. Well, think about that. What amazes you? In life, I mean. What are the things that bring a sense of amazement every time you encounter them? Maybe a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset. Is it the ocean waves or the mountains? Is it a newborn child or the joy of family? Or certain pieces of music or art? Maybe stunning buildings like the Eiffel Tower or the Taj Mahal. Of course, it's not just big things that can be amazing, right? It's small things as well. There's a show that's come out just in the last couple of years called Tiny World. That's about some of the smaller and amazing things on Earth. Let's take a look. The smallest monkey in the world, the pygmy marmoset. An adult will fit in the palm of your hand. Being so tiny makes it hard to know who's friend, foe, or food. There's a whole wide world living beneath our feet. Don't believe me? Look closer. In a land of giants, I got a million things to do. it's the smallest creatures I so much I wanna prove. that make the biggest difference. Go big, get loud and go home. A midwife toad on a dangerous mission. His precious eggs need to get to water fast and he'll risk his life to do it. You got a little, little. Join me, Paul Rudd, as we experience tiny wonders like you've never seen before. There are quite a few amazing things that are very tiny things. And that sense of amazement that we can get can come when we encounter things large or small, even things rather ordinary, like a baby or the joy of friendship, right? Just last summer while I was on sabbatical, I spent some time in Norway, where my family comes from. And while there, I got to take a ferry ride through a couple of fjords. Here's the photographic proof of it. It was a... It was a gray and drizzly day, which I didn't mind one bit, actually, because uh, it, it meant that most people were down below, and so there was a lot of room up on top. But it was incredibly stunning and an incredibly moving experience. Now, this is a video that I took there when we were in the Neira Fjord. This fjord is a UNESCO protected landscape. Obviously, this is the big kind of amazing. It was a stunning sight and very moving. And when we encounter things like this, things that are beautiful and amazing, whether large and sm or small, it does something inside of us, doesn't it? They do something inside us. They point us to something greater than ourselves. And we marvel at the beauty of it, the intricacy, the grandeur of it. We find ourselves exposed to something beyond us and reminded that there are more things in heaven and on earth than we dream, to paraphrase Shakespeare. We can feel small and humbled, not humiliated, but humbled, and at the very same time uplifted. Well, on Easter, Monday, Easter morning, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them came to the tomb to find it empty. And two angels there, well, two men in dazzling clothes, it says, told them that Jesus is risen. He is no longer with the dead, but with the living. And when they took the news to others, they didn't find a very welcome reception. Most of the disciples didn't believe them. And Peter's response was different. Some kind of hope entered Peter's impulsive, action-oriented heart, so he ran to the tomb to look for himself. And he found it empty, except for the grave clothes. And his response was amazement. That amazement 
where Peter has found himself face to face with something greater, that there is more to heaven and earth, more to Jesus than he had dreamed. There's not certainty, not yet. There's a sort of growing understanding, grasping the reality of something like this. It takes time. And amazement is a good start. Faith is rarely a flipping of a switch. It can be like that, of course, for some, but most of the time it's not. It's a growing awareness that happens like the planting of a seed. It needs time to grow, to flower, and to bear fruit. Now, there is still the matter of the disciples who wrote off the testimony of the women. Our translation says, these words seemed to them an idle tale. The Greek word for idle tale is actually more, more accurately translated garbage. So the response from those closest to Jesus over the last three years is, that's a load of rubbish. And this is after Jesus had told them he must suffer and die and rise again. But at the moment, they don't remember. We won't spend much time on the offhand prejudice of the guys who simply wrote off the testimony of the women that way, although it should be acknowledged. It's also about a kind of prejudice that closes them off from hearing truth, closes them off from amazement, from wonder, and from hope. And when we get closed off from amazement, from wonder, and from hope, we lose something of our humanity. We become distanced from the amazing God that has given us life. Peter's amazement is the beginning of understanding this news of resurrection. And in a way, it is also the end. My friend Caroline Lewis writes, The resurrection only makes sense when we remain amazed, marveling, and wondering at the love of God that reversed death itself. In the dark few days in which Jesus was in the tomb, the drab colorlessness of grief and fear descended on the disciples. Now in the news of the risen Jesus is the light and joy of his life. In that amazing news is the realization and the hope that there is more even more than we have ever dreamt of. Amen. Will you please stand as you are able for the hymn of the day? Jesus Christ is risen today. <laughs>
Together with Christians around the world and throughout the ages, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will continue with the prayers of the church. I will offer a series of brief prayers. And after a few, we will have a moment where you can offer up your own prayers, either silently or aloud. And at that point, for those of you worshiping with us in, in online, I would invite you to put your prayers into the comments section. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, keep our hearts open curious, awake to amazement. Let us never become so hard-hearted or closed off that we don't see the amazing things in this world, that we don't see the amazing, tr the amazing true news of your resurrection and your new life. O oh God, the rock of our salvation, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, in the midst of so much war in our world, we are celebrating your resurrection and your defeat of sin and death. And we pray for your peace to descend in these places where there is violence and bloodshed. O oh God, the rock of our salvation, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we pray for all who, will be, who are celebrating your resurrection in Easter worship services and gatherings at homes, friends and family getting together on this Easter Sunday. May all these gatherings be places, moments of joy and of love and of life. O oh God, the rock of our salvation, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Now, Lord, hear these prayers that we lift up to you silently or aloud or in the comments section online. O oh God, the rock of our salvation, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Peace of the Lord be with you always. Why don't we take a moment to share that peace with one another?
Okay, what kind of balls don't bounce? Bowling balls. <laughs> Bowling balls is true. Yeah. The joke is eyeballs. That's kind of gross, isn't it? <laughs> it was the best one I found <coughs> in that book today. Sorry about that, and sorry for coughing in here in the microphone. Anyway, um, yeah, so we will continue now with the offering. creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring, you bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses on the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. If you happen to be with us for the first time this morning, we want you to know that we celebrate an open communion table here at Rock of the Foothills. The invitation is from the Lord Jesus Christ and you are welcome to come. We have both wine and grape juice available. If you would prefer to have the grape juice, simply let us know when we come to you. Uh, the choir will come and commune first. And there are baskets on either side of the sanctuary here to receive the cups after you have communed. Our ushers will lead you forward by row. The table is prepared. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good.
Will you please stand as you are able? And will you, will you pray with me, please? God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us out in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is Sound the Trumpet. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.